Hello and welcome to CNCF Minutes. In this video, we'll be learning about KubeWord. So KubeWord is a CNCF sandbox project and it is really cool. Uh, basically, it is for extending the Kubernetes cluster uh, to run VM workloads within the cluster. Yes, you heard me right. You can run virtual machines alongside your container workloads and that is what KubeWord is for. So going into the wires, it's very simple like I explained. Uh, Basically, everybody is moving uh, to containerization. Uh, the journey has already either halfway through or to the completion, but there are still workloads that needs to be run as virtual machines. So they are there are still VM workloads. So you have your hardware OS VM platform and your VM workloads. Also, since you are transitioning, uh, there are uh, hardware OS and you have a Kubernetes layer, uh, which is the kind of de facto standard for running containers and you have your containerized workloads. Now, uh, all these pieces of, uh, you know, all these features, logging metrics, monitoring, scheduling are duplicated. So basically you have to do it both ways. And where KubeWords now sits in and solves this particular issue is you can run side by side your workloads with your, con uh, your VM workloads with your container workloads. So now you have hardware OS, you have Kubernetes on top of Kubernetes. Obviously you will be installing KubeWord and with that you will be having a VM workloads. That will be managed by KubeWord and you'll be having containerized workloads managed by Kubernetes API. And all these pieces are, um, you know, kind of same for uh, both these sets of workloads. So it becomes a single stack for you for running your containerized workloads and VN workloads, which is awesome, isn't it? Plus much more. So um, you can have similar workflows. So you will be uh, creating a YAML file. So if you are used to, you know, uh, creating a pod manifest uh, or, or any, any manifest deployment manifest. So with this also, you'll be creating a VM spec. So you, you will be creating a, a virtual machine object and then the controllers will take over. We'll discuss that in the architecture. Uh, you'll be using similar tooling. So you'll be using your uh, standard cube cuddle command. You'll be using, uh, you know, uh, your monitoring solutions, your Prometheus, your Profana. So basically you'll be using all the same tools that you are using for Kubernetes, which are N number. Uh, and yes, uh, YAML is there. So you have your standard uh, kubectl commands to apply uh, or create the virtual machines as well. Now, um, Obviously, the, there are a lot of use cases. Uh, the, the major one is running um, containers side by side uh, with the VMs uh, and having a virtual machines also leverage the power of the Kubernetes orchestration system. Uh, another set of use cases that are, com that are coming very common is Kubernetes on Kubernetes. So uh, you have your uh, bare metal and then on top of it, you have KubeWord uh, and then on top of it, you have a VM. And on that, you have a Kubernetes cluster or a K3S cluster, and then you run your containerized workload there. So basically Kubernetes in Kubernetes. Now there are other projects such as uh, Harvester, uh, which is open source. You can find the video in the channel uh, on the deep dive. Uh, so Harvester is there. Harvester uses um, KubeWord and KubeWord technology to create spin VMs on bare metal infrastructure. Then um, these are some from the documentation uh, that, um, you know, leveraging to uh, manage the virtual machines, uh, combining uh, the existing virtualized uh, workloads with the new containerized workloads and uh, supporting the development of microservices application containers that interact with existing uh, virtualized applications. So pretty simple, right? And how it, how it uh, all works is basically KubeWord uh, will have a KVM and a KEMU process inside the pod that it creates. So you have to think like this, your VM, will be running as a pod on your cluster. But this will be a VM. So you have uh, Kates and on Kates you'll be having the Kubert pod. So when you install Kubert, the first step is on top of Kates, you will install Kubert. Now the Kubert components have uh, CRDs. So a bunch of CRDs, bunch of controllers and a daemon set will be installed onto the cluster that will be taking care of uh, the, you know, kind of scheduling, running your VM workloads as pods. So you create a Kubernetes object, the controller schedules it on a particular host, then the word handler daemon uh, will be launching that uh, virtual machine instance. So there's a VM that you create and there's a VMI virtual machine instance that gets created. Now, this is a typical workflow. So uh, a user creates a VM manifest uh, and uh, applies it using kubectl. 
goes to API server. There is a word controller because you already have installed cube word components that creates a pod and schedules it on a particular node. Now say that this is a node, you have a kubelet component and then uh, you have a daemon set which is running on every node which is called word handler. Now it instructs another component which is called a word handler uh, uh, process uh, and uh, this starts the chemo process and also the VM. So with the help of kubelet, the container runtime interface, you'll be having a pod uh, and this particular word handler will uh, talk to your word uh, launcher inside the pod, uh, inside the VM pod and will be responsible for starting the container and also other features like live migration, etc. So that's how the typical workflow works. And um, let's see kubeword in action. So if you see, um, I have done a kubectl pods A. So this is a standard Kubernetes cluster. I have all the kubeword uh, components which are there. Uh, you have the controller, the handlers as a daemon set, the operator which is there. And then I try to create a virtual machine uh, object. So a standard Kubernetes, you have API version, you have virtual machine. Uh, I give some of the specs and you know uh, the disk, the images, and uh, give the container uh, disk, which is the image. So here I am defining it as container disk. There are other ways. Uh, then I do kubectl get VMs. It was stopped. I did a word CTL. So basically you need a, a word control or word CTL tool to start, stop, interact with uh, your uh, virtual machines. You can also do it using uh, kubectl patch commands. Everything is mentioned in the documentation. I can actually show that. So this is basically the user guide. The documentation is pretty solid uh, using the kubeword. So this is the patching command that I was talking about. You can either use this or you can either use um, a crew plugin. Uh, so you, if you have a crew plugin installed uh, for um, kubectl, then you can directly use kubectl word. So different ways, and you can also try it out on different kind of scenarios. And after this, when I do a word CTL start test VM, then the virtual machine is scheduled to start. So it is now scheduling phase. And after some time it goes to running phase, gets the IP and gets the node name, name where it is getting scheduled. And now I do a word CTL console test VM. I am inside the virtual machine. And if you see, uh, okay, it's actually closed because I was disconnected. I can do it right now. So I am inside the uh, virtual machine. And if I do a touch test, LS. So everything is there. You have it, it's a typical virtual machine which is having all the directories and everything. And it's uh, so basically you have a virtual machine running uh, as a pod inside your Kubernetes cluster alongside your containerized workloads. That's what KubeWord is for. And if you actually want a deep dive session, uh, there is a video that I did with. Um, you know, one of the maintainers uh, from KubeWord and uh, that is pretty deep dive into going into live migration and all that stuff. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, so if you like the video, please um, uh, care to like, subscribe and share and we'll see you in the next CNCF minutes. Thank you for watching.